Welcome to the fourth part in our five-part series on biblical stewardship. As we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for how you continually call us back, not just to you, but to your word and to the concept of service. Guide us in our short time together in this session. Show us what you have for us from this area in this topic and continue to bless us as we continue to seek you and even more as we continue to seek to be a blessing to others as well. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you remember one of the things that we've come back to through this time together so far is the fact that stewardship is a central part of life. You know, the most central part of our life needs to be a grounding in Jesus. You know, as we're grounded in Jesus, we're wanting to go and serve others. We're wanting to use what God has given us in a better and a correct way. Often we seem to forget about that. And there's areas that often when we look at them, we don't even think about these as being key components when it comes to the concept of stewardship. One of these happens to be the area that we're going to take a look at in our short time together. And as I was putting together this series and I was praying over what we should include, God came to me and said, well, why don't you include this area? And I went, you know, I, I really had never thought about this being an area that was vital to stewardship. The area that we're taking a look at is Matthew chapter 6, looking at verses 9 through 13. You know, many of us know this and we can recite this. This is the Lord's Prayer. You know, so often as we look at this, we look at it in a way that we say, well, this is just about how we're supposed to pray, how to pray, but it's not about stewardship. You know, the thing that we forget that even prayer itself, the act of taking time to communicate with God is an act of stewardship. It's an act of service. It's showing that we cannot do this on our own and even more that we're needing the very power of God to be able to see us through. Now, in the next couple moments that we have together, let's take a look at these verses in depth and let's see what God has for us today. You know, in chapter 6, we see Jesus talking with the disciples and building this case of the importance of prayer. The disciples say, hey, you know, you've been talking about prayer. Well, teach us to pray. And so Jesus comes and he starts with saying this. Pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Right here, Jesus comes out and he says, the first thing that you need to realize, not just in prayer, not just in life, but ultimately in service, is that God is the one in control. Not just that God is the one in control, God is the one that has control over everything. He is the center of everything that is. There is no one outside of him. Now, if we actually remembered that, how would things be? Would we actually work together? Would our interaction with different elements that we have problems with be different? Or would it just be the same status quo and we're going, well, you know, I don't like this. I don't like that about you. So I'm just going to keep on the offensive and keep on the attack. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I just don't like it. Now, that's the center of the problem that started in the courts of heaven. And that's why we have the problems that we do today is because of an eye problem. We need to remember that in service... It's about the team. It's not about ourselves. We need to know and remember and understand that God's the one that's in control fully. Though he's given us responsibilities, 
we're supposed to we're supposed to look at this and say okay i could come on the attack i could do this i could do that but maybe i should sit down with the person and say okay let's talk this out let's see what we can do to work together you know that that is the whole concept not just in service but in prayer is looking for a resolution in the solution that is Jesus so that we're able to do what he's called us to do. So often we forget that. And this is why Jesus starts in, we, we need to remember in the Lord's Prayer, this is not something that's new. Jesus is not telling them something that's new. He's reinforcing a concept that they already had in a brand new way to help them as they're actually seeking to do what he's calling them to do. I can't say this enough. If we were doing that, how much more would this change our views? How much more would this change our thinking as to what we are supposed to do in certain situations? For some, I have to be honest with you, some situations, no matter what we do, they will not change. Because a person convinced in their mind of a certain way, they're not going to change. They're going to stay the same way, no matter what you're trying to do. But this is where we need to depend on Jesus, depend on God, knowing that his results will happen may not happen in the timing that we want, but it will happen in the timing that's needed. But right here, when Jesus says to pray this, remembering that God is at the center, God is the only one, but his name is a name to be respected. It's to be respected because it is a name of service. It's a name that reminds us of what we need to be doing. We forget about that too much. We would rather focus on our needs and what we want instead of serving, which is what God continues to call us to, because that's what he does. His character, who he is, will never change. This is why he keeps telling us service is the central key of stewardship. You can talk about tithe, you can talk about time, you can talk about everything, but service is the key that unlocks all these areas so you're able to actually do things. But Jesus continues on with this, and he says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right here, remembering the very fact that this earth's existence as it is now will not always be. There is going to be an ending point because there is only so much that can continue to happen. Now, a lot of us go, well, no, I want to see Everything go on for a long time and not have to worry about anything, but everything is getting worse and worse, isn't it? It's to the point where if it continues on, there's no way that we're going to be able to continue as, as an earth, period. God's already stepped in. He's in control, but there's a certain point that he has to say enough is enough, and I have to end it here and now. I don't know about you, my hope is that that is soon, but at the same time, it's in his timing. That's what Jesus is re reminding of, us about. It, it's, it's the service element. It's in the timing that comes because of him that while we don't understand it, maybe one day in eternity, we will better have a grasp on what's going on because everything works in a timing outside of us that is in God's hands. But right here, Jesus helps us to remember not just the fact that God's kingdom is ultimately going to be in control, but he says, your will be done. 
what you have planned. Let that be the line that we're focused on. Let that be the line that we're living on so that everything that we are doing, that you're doing through us, is a result of what you have planned. Not just in heaven, but here on earth as well. You know, it's amazing in the Lord's Prayer, as we talk about service and stewardship and all this, every element continues to build upon itself. Jesus continued to do that, to help people learn more fully who he's calling them to be in him. Now, if that was our focus, what might change? Or have we gotten to the point where a lot of our situations are so hostile that we're like, well, none of this is ever going to change. There is no way that things are going to change, that people are going to change, or even that I'm going to change. Most of the time, we don't want to change because it's all about us, which really it's not. It's never been about us, and it never will be about us. It's about Jesus and how we can continue to be of service in him as he continues to call us through everything that's going on. But he continues on. Give us this day our daily bread. So often we go about this life and our whole thought process is what I want. What I, 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 you insert the blank. It's all about our wants. Jesus comes back to us and says, service is about needs. Pray that God continues to give the needs of what is at the center of your life, which is very simple things. So often we want all this other stuff and we really don't need it. God will provide for our needs. If our wants and needs are one of the same, that, that's provided for. But as these things are provided for, our query, our questions need to be in this. How are we taking this to give back to others as God has given to us? Are we sharing what we have with others to make all this a blessing so that in everything that's happening, we're continuing to bless others because of how God has blessed us. But Jesus builds on this. As we're blessing others, we need to go into this step and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. You know, we see other other texts in the Bible, one specifically comes to mind, have no debt to others except the debt of love. You know, being willing to serve. But there are going to be people that wrong us all the time. We, we can't get away from that. No matter what we do, there's always going to be something that someone takes wrong. We can't do anything correct in a lot of people's eyes. But... Is the focus on God. But right here, we need to come back and say, God, I know that I've done wrong. I know I've done wrong to you. Make my path correct as it is in you once again and keep me on that solid way so that I'm able to follow you. And as, as I seek this, help me to seek forgiveness from those that I've wronged or those that have wronged me. Being able to forgive is a key thing in service. Because holding it does more damage and causes more problems than we even want to realize. But Jesus wraps this whole concept of service and prayer and all this up in this last verse, in verse 13, where he says this, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Right here, that whole concept, we, we can literally boil it down to this. Keep us away from the evil one. Or even looking at Job and his life. Keep the door shut. Place a hedge around me so the devil and his angels cannot touch us. 
Now, too often our problems come because we've left the door open to all that is temptation, all that is the satanic. Our continual prayer needs to be in the focus of the fact that God is in control, that he knows what's going on, and that he will ultimately have the full say in everything that's happening. But in this, and this is very important, we see this in other Gospels, in Matthew, in my Bible, we have this last part in parentheses. Because a lot of, uh, a lot of scrolls that we see over the centuries might have not had this because of whether we would call it scribal error or the scrolls were burned. It, it just wasn't there. So we're adding this in because it's an important part of the Lord's Prayer where Jesus ends with this, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Remembering that God is the one in full control. We've said that again. We've said that before. He's the one that has the first, the last, and all in between says, and he's going to do what's right as it is in him through our lives. Question is, are we allowing him to have that control? As we continue to allow him that control, he's going to help us in the area of service. He's going to help us to be stewards that manage all areas. He's going to help us to walk the path that he's called us to. Trials and tribulations and all. Knowing that this is but another stepping stone in our experience with him if we continue to allow him to full control, to have full control. So as we do this, what is our response going to be? Are we going to go the other way? Are we going to tear other people down? Or are we going to say, I'm standing with God. I'm standing on the truth, in the truth, and in the way. Maybe in other people's way, but I'm staying faithful to God, no matter what the cost. As we continue to seek to be his vessels, his stewards, his lights, will be changed in ways that we cannot even imagine right now. We'll continue to grow in him in these times and throughout the ages of eternity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that that's what you continue to call us to. Guide us as we seek you, as we seek to be more of a family of faith, and even more as we seek to go forward in what you're calling us to. Father, guide us, bless us. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I hope that this has been a learning experience and a blessing for each one of you so far. We have one part left in our series together, in our sessions together, however we want to call it. I encourage you to go back through these texts. Take a look at them. Read them in full context. Share this with others so that as we continue to study God's Word, we can be blessed together. I look forward to seeing you next time as we continue to study God's Word together. God bless.